The plasma cutter is a machine that cuts through electrically conductive materials by means of an accelerated jet of hot plasma. This CNC plasma cutter features servo motors to move the X and Y axes of motion. Any two-dimensional shape can be cut quickly and accurately in materials such as aluminum and steel up to one half inch thick. Let's review the lesson objectives. By the end of this video, students will be able to prepare the workshop and equipment, Import a DXF geometry file. Load material to the machine table. Perform a test cut and set the kerf width compensation. Load the machine configuration settings. Convert geometry to cut paths. Perform automated plasma cutting of a part design. Observe safety procedures such as wearing personal protective equipment and shut down the equipment. We'll begin by opening the large roll-up door. Feed the chains at a moderate pace so they don't jump off the sprocket. Turn on the two black switches, activating the fans to ventilate the building. Turn on the large exhaust fan with three poles of the drawstring to reach maximum speed. Next, we'll need to turn on the shop air compressor and dryer located in the corner of the building. We'll start with the air dryer. Turn the switch 90 degrees to the on position. No gauge movement is expected immediately. Next, we'll turn on the air compressor. It may or may not start depending on the pressure in the tank. Turn the switch to the automatic position. The gauge will increase pressure until approximately 160 PSI, at which point the compressor will shut off. Next, we'll turn on the plasma cam control unit. Turn on the hypertherm plasma cutter using the rotary switch on the back of the unit. The control screen will illuminate. Turn on the computer tower. Launch the plasma cutter software design edge. From the machine menu, choose Initialize. The Z-axis will make a buzzing sound during the initialization process. This is normal. The X and Y axes will move to the homing switches at the origin. Load the material onto the cutting table. Ask for assistance if the piece is large or heavy. Be careful of sharp points and edges. Place the fence tabs in the desired locations. Pull the workpiece toward the fence tabs. Here's a closer look. Using the control panel, jog the machine to a location on the material where a test cut can be made. Select the Z-axis and jog downward toward the workpiece. Notice that while jogging, the yellow cursor on the screen moves to represent the position of the torch. Let's draw a line to make our test cut. Press Escape when finished using the tool. Before converting the line to a cut path, we need to verify the material settings. Go to Settings, Settings. Choose the Configurations tab. Today we'll be cutting 1 8 inch aluminum with 65 amp shielded consumables. We've set up these material templates based on Hypertherm's recommendations. Each template contains numerous cutting parameters. No further adjustment of these parameters is needed. Notice the load button is already grayed out, indicating these parameters are already loaded. To choose a different material, simply double-click and click Load. As mentioned, today we're cutting 8-inch aluminum with 65-amp shielded consumables. Click OK when finished. Notice the green color means the geometry is selected. Choose Machine, Convert to Cut Path. Click near the line. Notice the line has turned blue, indicating that a cut path has been created. We are now ready to cut. Put on a green shaded face mask of at least ANSI Shade 8. Ensure no bystanders are in the area. Watching the plasma arc without a proper shaded lens can cause permanent eye damage. From the machine menu, press Cut. 
Warning, the machine will begin cutting immediately. When the piece has cooled, measure the cut using the interior jaws of a caliper. Here, we measure 88 thousandths of an inch. In the software, choose Settings, Settings, and enter the Kerf Width measurement into the field on the Offsets tab. Say OK. We'll select our test cut and press Delete on the keyboard. We are now ready to import our design. From the File menu, choose Import. Select your file location and choose the DXF file. If you do not see your file, ensure DXF is selected in the drop-down menu. Notice, this design imported incorrectly. The wrong regions are shaded and we will not be able to convert this design to cut paths. We need to delete this design and start over. From the File menu, let's re-import our design. Browse to the file location. Again, ensure that DXF is selected as the file type. To successfully import most DXFs, we need to select the Link Segments checkbox. Notice the shape is now properly shaded. We've rotated our design to better fit our material. We'll select the design and move it into position using the M key to activate the Move tool. We can manually move the machine by hand to ensure that the design fits within the available space on our material. Select the geometry one more time. From the machine menu, choose Convert to Cut Path. Select a point near but outside the geometry. In most cases, click Yes, automatically convert holes inside the path. Notice cut paths have now been created. We can zoom in by pressing F1 on the keyboard for a closer look. Here, we see the entry and lead-in move on this interior path. Pressing the F2 key will zoom out the view. Continue viewing around the shape to ensure the desired result. The F9 and F10 keys are used to toggle which paths are displayed, geometry, cut paths, or both. Blue lines represent cut paths. After cut paths are generated, it is sometimes preferred to view cut paths only. Select the cut path and choose Machine Cut Preview. Press Start. Ensure that inside shapes are cut first. Let's turn down the speed a bit and see that again. Close the preview. Select the geometry one last time in preparation for cutting. This time, we'll start the machine from the control panel. Again, ensure you are wearing a shaded face mask and no bystanders are nearby. Watching the plasma arc without a proper shaded lens can cause permanent eye damage. Immediately after starting, it is recommended to exit the building to avoid breathing the dust and fumes produced during plasma cutting. Press the Start button. Notice the control computer shows a live preview of the cutting progress. Wait about 10 minutes for the part to cool and smoke to clear. Let's take a look at our finished workpiece. When finished, begin the shutdown and cleanup process. Turn off the air compressor. Turn off the air dryer. Turn off the hypertherm plasma cutter. Sweep dust from the machine rails and workpiece using a small bench broom. 
Use a vacuum to remove dust from the cutting area. Hang the face shield back on the wall hook. Turn off the large exhaust fan. Turn off the building fans. Close the roll-up door. Fasten the chain securely on the bolt. We hope you've enjoyed learning how to use the CNC plasma cutter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.